Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with David Embry. He's the Edmondson County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. Good morning, David. Good morning, Joanna. Now, David, water is important to all of us. It's one of those basic needs, right. and it's certainly not the case just for us, but it's for our livestock as well, especially during right. the winter months. Yeah, especially during the winter. A lot of people don't really think about watering their livestock as much in the wintertime. They think, well, you know, the weather's not hot anymore. They're not as thirsty as they would be during the summer and things like that. Quite the contrary. They need just as much water, or they need water just as much, I should say. In amount, now, the amount that they're going to drink is generally going to go down depending on what type of animal you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Cattle, horses, they're going to drink more during hotter weather, but they're still going to need quite a bit of water during the wintertime. Your smaller ruminants, however, goat, sheep, those kind of things, they're going to drink about the same amount of water regardless whether it's winter or summertime. So watering in the winter is important for a variety of reasons, mainly because you've got to f be careful of the freezing. Yeah, because, it's got to be accessible. Right. Because a lot of times, even still with some of our livestock producers, they rely on a stream or maybe ponds mm -hmm. or things like that. Well, when they're frozen, Right. That means we're going to have to get out there and break ice or make sure that they have some water right. out there that's accessible yeah. to you. What we've got to do, Joanna, is consider what our water source is first. Mm -hmm. Is it a pond? Is it city water? Is it a spring? Um, in the wintertime, a lot of natural ways that we can keep from freezing is if we have running water. If that water is running constantly, if it's running down a creek and we have an area where they can water out of that creek, that's going to keep it from freezing up as bad. Mm -hmm. If it's a pond and it has an overflow and has, you know, a stream coming into it, that's going to keep it from freezing. But if it's a pond that doesn't have an overflow, doesn't have a stream coming into it, we've got to do things to make sure that it's going to be accessible for the cattle, whether we go out and break it ourselves or if we had an electricity source there close where we can hook up some kind of a heating system or we can install some things to mm -hmm. make it keep from freezing things go ahead <laughs> no I was about to say and a lot of times we don't think about those things right. until the weather either forecasts or we wake up one morning and, and it's frozen right so we need to do some preparation before that that's right we really need to prepare ahead of time we need to plan our systems if we're starting fresh we need to say okay look if I'm gonna dig this pond here and this is gonna be my water source for my cattle what do I need to do to make sure that it's winny, winter accessible for the animals mm -hmm. There's a lot of things we can do. We just talked about some of them. Um, consider where it's going to be. How close is it to where you're going to feed? You know, you don't want stuff from your feeding area getting into your pond, so you need to plan for that as well. But we do need to have it close because in the wintertime, especially cattle, they're going to stay pretty close to where you're feeding them. They're not going to want to stray very far off, so they're going to be in there close. They'll go to water to get what they need, but to make sure that they're gaining the way you want them to gain, you're going to have to have them close to that source. Yes, and water is so very important to their dry matter intake right, about how sure much is. they will eat. And so, right. and, and you know, a lot of people think, well, but there's a lot of stress on that animal in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's cold enough to freeze and if it's cold, and in Kentucky it's usually like cold, wet, <laughs> right, cold, wet, nasty. Yes, and then with some frozen ice on top, sometimes mm -hmm. we're just really excited that it did actually freeze so we have some hard ground. That's but right. all those things need to be considered, and their energy mm -hmm. requirements might be more That's correct. if we don't have proper shelter and those type of things right. for them. Right, so water is really important to them. If you've got city water, there's different things that you can do to uh, make sure that that water's flowing. Or if you've got electricity, again, you can hook up some kind of a water heater that you can help keep that unfrozen for the animals. Yeah, because I know a lot of people have installed automatic waters and right. things like that. So hopefully they have a backup plan mm -hmm. to make sure that that water right. is accessible and available to those. But cattle. you still have to check those. That's not a that's not a free for all. You can't expect it to not freeze up because sometimes the weather can get cold, and we've learned the last few winters that even these ball waters can freeze up if we're not careful with them. Now, David, do we have information at the Extension Office about requirements, water requirements, and those type of things? Yes, Joanna, we do. There are several publications. I happen to have one with me called Winter Watering of Livestock that comes off of the Master Grazer website on UK's website. And it's got real good 
information about what water requirements are for different size animals and for different times of the year. So that's a good source. There are several other sources that talk about building waterers of different types, tire waterers and things like that. So there's a lot of good information out there. All right, just be prepared. Winter weather will get here in Kentucky. We never know in what shape, form or fashion it's going to come in, but David's given us some really good tips and things to think about and prepare. Thanks for being here with us. Thanks David. for having me. And if you have any questions, make sure to contact your local extension office. We'd be happy to help. Thanks for watching and have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.